I wish to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we are meeting on, the Wajuk people of the Noongar Nation. I wish to also pay my respects to elders, past and present. Dr. Kent, special guests, parents, friends, graduating students, welcome the 2021 music presentation evening, where we celebrate six years of early mornings, of diligent practice, and careful attention to your music study and learning your choir repertoire. Or maybe it's your presentation night. As is tradition with these evenings, we always begin with performances by the top five instrumental students in no particular order. And to start tonight, we have our very own nature boy, as nature intended him, I think. Please make welcome Flavio Connelletti.
Ladies and gentlemen, could you please give a big warm church and welcome to Zoe Hawksworth.
Okay, thank you, Zoe. Next we have the miraculous marimba playing of Miss Yuming Han. Please make her welcome. Earlier this year, our next performer uh, raised a significant amount of money by being involved in the great, world's greatest shave and uh, hugely commendable um, in, in um, honour of cancer research and um, as a way of 
recognising and as a tribute to his, his voice teacher who is currently undergoing um, cancer treatment. Um, there's probably a few other students I wish could have been involved in the world's greatest shave, but as I'm occasionally reminded, we're not in the army. <laughs> Could you please make welcome our next performer, Guy Archibald.
Our final performer tonight is one of those students that sleeps, breathes, eats music. And uh, I, I can't imagine a point in this, this person's daily routine where they're not involved in music in some way. Please make welcome our last performer for this evening, Aidan Labuschagne.
As has become tradition with our presentation nights, we have a guest speaker, typically a, uh, an alumni, one of our graduates from years past that has gone on to make their mark in a, a, a field of endeavour. Uh, tonight's alumni is no different. Um, graduation, graduating class of 2011 on the bassoon. Um, the last, probably one of the last times I saw our guest speaker tonight, Sam, was on stage during the Year 12 skit in 2011, where, in the role of Mr. Robinson, he was singing to a group of, of a um, terrified first years um, and uh, declaiming that I'm going to make a muso out of you. And ever since that performance, I've thought, that's something I need to look up to. I need to live up to that. Um, because you know, Sam really performed with conviction. And we're really fortunate tonight to have that very same person, um, but not in the guise of Mr. Robinson, but in the guise of himself. Please make welcome Sam Harriman. Thank you very much, Mr. Robinson, and a belated apology for that performance. Um, I've yet to live it down, apparently, so. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for having me here tonight. Um, Dr. Kent, Mr. Robinson, um, all the staff, many of whom were here when I was here 10 years ago, so it's good to see that um, there hasn't been a lot of change there. Um, all the parents and friends and relatives, um, but most of all the students of tonight, um, we're here for you, so congratulations on uh, making it to the end of your journey here at the music department. Um, in particular, I'd like to congratulate the soloists tonight who put in um, an amazing effort just then. I was blown away. Um, I don't think I was ever at that level. Um, I certainly can't imagine, and I'm certainly not at that level now. Um, so you should all be incredibly proud um, of what you've just done there. Graduating from the Churchland's Music Program is an incredibly special achievement, but particularly this year, it is something to be uh, really proud of. As a cohort, you've had to deal with unprecedented disruption and hardship, and so to have made it to the end is a true testament to your resilience and your character. And I would also like to acknowledge the teachers who have likewise had to deal with so much uncertainty. Um, I myself am the son of two music teachers, so I have just the very smallest level of understanding uh, just how challenging the past months and years have been for the staff, but I'm sure it's all been worth it to see the students on stage receiving their certificates tonight. I'm incredibly honoured to have been invited to speak tonight, um, and honestly, I'm a little shocked because it was only 10 years ago that I was sitting uh, in those same seats. Uh, well, actually, no, I was in the slightly older seats in the auditorium next door, um, because when I graduated, this theatre was just slabs of concrete and a construction site. Um, I was lucky enough, actually, to play for the first time in this uh, auditorium just a couple of weeks ago. I was bassoon four in Symphony Fantastique, where I'm tacit for the first three movements, which is probably a, um, a good representation of where my current strengths lie. <laughs> so after graduating from Churchlands uh, 10 years ago, I spent four years at UWA, earning an honours degree in communications and media, before moving over to Sydney to study a master's degree in screenwriting at the National Film School in... Um, yeah, over east. Between those degrees, I did spend a summer at a Jewish summer camp in rural Canada where, for whatever reason, I was in charge of the drama program and then again, for whatever reason, I directed a production of Into the Woods, but the less said about that, I think, is the better. <laughs> because for me, everything started at Churchlands. Some of my closest and dearest friends are my fellow graduates in the class of 2011. Um, although we're spread all across the world at the moment, um, I know that whenever we do see each other, we go right back to those days that we spent here, um, those formative years of your, our lives that are so special to us. And the truth be told, I was actually a pretty average music student. Um, I'm sure some of the teachers probably agree with that. Um, I had to work really hard to grasp the complexities of music theory, and honestly, I still don't really understand it today. Um, I found practice incredibly tedious. And most of my melodic dictation was actually guesswork, um, so if I got sort of 50% right, I was, I was pretty happy with that. What I really loved about music, though, was being part of the ensembles and the music literature side um, of the studies. Because there's something intangible about that thrill of being part of a music ensemble. That experience of making music with 50 other people, that makes the practice all worth it. Understanding how your part fits in with the rest of the whole, and generally speaking, as a bassoonist, you get lots of time to rest so you can admire the string section and what they're doing at the front. 
As I said, the other part was music literature, and that's really where my love of music lies. The stories that people can tell through music, and the stories about the composers, and what they're able to do um, just with the, with the notes of a scale. That was something that I really connected with music, and something that still drives my passion with music today. Because storytelling has always been incredibly important to me, both as the way we communicate ideas to each other and engage in the shared experiences as part of a broader, broader culture. And in particular, film and television are such vital storytelling mediums. I mean, we can transmit those broadcasts to the rest of the world. So to latch onto those universal themes is more important than ever. As human beings, it is very natural for us to seek out representation and familiarity. And we want to see those recognisable parts of humanity in the stories and characters and apply them to our own lives. Everybody in this room, probably multiple times, has done the test to figure out what Hogwarts house they belong in or they've got an opinion on who should sit on the Iron Throne, um, or perhaps for the more morbid, you know how far you'd get in the Squid Game, um, if anyone's managed to watch that one yet. Um, I still have a couple of episodes left, actually, so please do not spoil. Um, so in my own screenwriting practice, and something that I'm really drawn to writing stories about, are uh, stories about young people, the coming of age. It's my absolute favourite genre to read scripts of, to watch films of, and most importantly, to write about. The coming of age is a classic. It's been around since the, the dawn of time uh, because it's a story of a young person growing, changing and exploring the world around them. These are universal themes. They translate across cultures, across borders. And that's why I think they, um, they resonate so strongly. And each one of you sitting in those seats in front of me, you're the protagonist of your own coming of age story at this moment. And each one of you decides what happens next. I've always been really interested in the idea of the graduation and the presentation ceremony and anniversaries and celebrations because we assign so much meaning to them as human beings. Tomorrow, everybody will make up, wake up more or less the same person, except the people in the front three rows will wake up as graduates. Some of you might already have your driver's licence or have turned 18 and you've got the various benefits that are associated with reaching that age. And these are really significant moments in our lives, but mostly it's because we're told of how important they are. But the truth is, nights like tonight will mean different things to each of you. For some, it will be the end of something really special, a natural conclusion to your time at Churchlands. For others, it will be just the beginning of the next chapter of something a lot bigger. And maybe for some of you, it's just a presentation night. Whatever the case is, I encourage all of you to take the time to reflect on everything and everyone that has been a part of your story so far. The friends and the memories you've made here, the quiet moments of achievement and the louder moments of celebration. Be proud of your success and congratulate the triumphs of those around you. But don't be afraid to also reflect on the times when things weren't going your way. Maybe you said something you regret or got frustrated. Maybe you thought something was too challenging and you gave up a bit too early. Perhaps you treated a friend or a family member poorly and you've always regretted that. Don't ignore those moments. Acknowledge them, absorb them and allow yourself to grow from them. Because tonight and the days to come are the culmination of a lifetime of experiences. But tomorrow you wake up and the story goes on. So what I want you all to think about is what happens next. What does your journey look like? What sort of narrative do you want to tell? These decisions are all yours to make. But if I can offer some vaguely qualified advice uh, about character and arcs and things we look for in storytelling, be true to yourself. You know yourself better than anyone else. But listen to others with humility and be critical with feedback. Don't take everything as gospel. Open yourself up to new opportunities. Be brave in what you choose to explore. Commit yourself fully, but don't be afraid to say no. Acknowledge your own limitations and work within them. But most importantly, and I cannot stress this enough, look out for one another. The person sitting next to you is the hero of their own story, just as you are the hero of yours. So practice selflessness and kindness. Be thankful for the help you receive and generous with the assistance that you offer others. As young people making their way in the world, you are going to feel the effects of the most turbulent time in recent history more than any other generation, and it's something you're going to have to get through together. Be patient and understanding. Accept the faults in others and yourself but above all else, I want you to look back and be proud of the story that you've written. Congratulations again, and thank you very much, and I can't wait to see what the stories hold. Thank you.
you very, very much, Sam. Now I'd like to invite Dr. Kent to come down onto the stage, please, as we prepare to present certificates to our Year 12 music students. Now, in anticipation of this moment, we have dug into the archives, into the vault, and have found some rare treasures, some of which I will share with you as the presentations go on. Our first student this evening, please make welcome RGLVR. Our next student enjoyed nippers at City Beach, hockey, and likes singing. His first choice was voice, but if he couldn't um, receive a spot on voice, he was happy to accept violin or oboe. Please make welcome Guy Archibald. Emily Bennett lists among her favourite activities playing in tapestry ensemble on viola and lead violin in her school ensemble at Devalia. Emily. Jade says, I believe that I'm not a conventional 11-year-old girl. I'm a tomboy. I like doing things that boys do and play. <laughs> I play football, netball, t-ball, and cross-country running. I ran the city, city to surf 12 kilometers two years in a row and managed to achieve a time of one hour and three minutes. Well done, Jade. student is guitarist Joshua Bolton. Come on down, Joshua. <laughs> My name is Kaiden and I go to Kalamunda Primary School. I am a school prefect and I have lots of friends. I'm adventurous and I like trying new things. I think I should do things that make me happy. His first choice was saxophone, and if he couldn't play saxophone, he would be happy to be a horn player, oboe player, or trombonist. Come on down, Kaiden. Next is violinist Alicia Chan. <laughs> Alicia likes music because it relaxes me and it gets me gets very nice if I'm doing a gentle song or I do a jumpy song, it will still get me into the song. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. Another violinist, please come on stage, Perry Chan. Hannah Miriam Clark. <laughs> now, Hannah, if she had asked her friends to describe her in one word, the response would probably include slightly crazy, quiet, bouncy, quick-tempered, loyal, absolute crazy, bookworm, and thoughtful. I enjoy playing my viola, although sometimes getting started is a bit challenging. Come on, Come on Hannah. Okay, on the 
although listed as a percussionist and uh, entering our program as a percussionist, you all saw him earlier tonight as a jazz keyboard player um, with certainly a very high level of ability, <laughs> Flavio Connelletti. Hayley Dallin. <laughs> Hayley is the second eldest of four children. I am very creative. I am deputy head girl at Newborough Primary School. Her first choice was harp. Chris Fudge, double bass. And Glenn Fudge, double bass. <laughs> Our composition student, Patrick Gleason. Lynette Grolton. I am a nice girl who is second youngest in my family. I have lots of brothers and sisters. I even have two nephews. I've got a good temper, except with my little annoying sister. <laughs> Yuming Han, a percussion. I am an organised and friendly person who loves to have fun. I usually love anything to do with music. Unlike other people, I actually like learning new things, like the recorder. <laughs> she then goes on to list all of the things she hates. <sighs> Zoe Hawksworth. So he loves to write stories during spare time. She gets really excited at the thought of changing the English language into similes and metaphors. <laughs> Miss, Miss Humble, her primary school teacher in year five, says she is a novelist in the making. Jessica Hazeldean. Jasmine Hicks. Jasmine says that art makes me feel relaxed and I enjoy drawing animals. Her first choice was flutes. Kevin Jiang. Christopher Jones. <laughs> Among his accomplishments, performed Christmas carols on Channel 9 TV. <laughs> Aidan Labochain. <laughs> My favorite activities out of school are going to my oboe lessons. <laughs> if we didn't let him in on oboe, he would have been happy with horn or bassoon. Edward Lee. <laughs> Egybert Lynn. In primary school, Egybert was a student leader and a volleyball captain.
Finn Lowry. Finn says of himself, I really like superheroes. <laughs> Dolly Newen. <laughs> Kaya O'Brien. I am an artistic and creative person. I am kind and have a gentle nature. I am polite, organized, and responsible. I am a good leader, and I strive to choose the right path. I am dedicated, and I like to give my best in everything I do. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Lindsay Pegram. I think I am sparky a creative thinker and thoughtful. However, my family thinks I am very noisy. <laughs> Anna Bordius. <clears throat> Auditioning on the cello. In 2013, Hannah was awarded Aussie of the Month at school and she wears her badge with pride and she likes to read, swim, and cook. Queen. Imogen Robbins. Now, Imogen is a full-time music addict, and I will go insane if I don't play or listen to music every day. I do craft on the weekends. Paper, scissors, and glue are my best friends. Oscar Robinson. Oscar loves running around and annoying his brother and sister. And that is what he does outside of school. <laughs> His first choice was clarinet. Jack Rowe, bassoonist. <clears throat> outside of school, Jack likes motorbike riding, where his dad takes his brother and him to the track. And he also loves hockey, where he trains to play games every week and camping. His first choice was also clarinet. Kate Russell. <clears throat> Justin Sue. <clears throat> First choice was guitar, second choice was saxophone. One of the school activities I enjoy the most is music. My school has the subject of music, which I'm very grateful for, because other students in other schools don't get the privilege to learn music. Jack Taylor. One of Jack's primary school teachers, Miss Denham, said, we will miss his inimitable style and approach next year, and we've thoroughly enjoyed his ready wit and boundless curiosity. James Taylor. His passions include Minecraft and Lego. <laughs> he enjoys music lessons such as piano, clarinet and band. Pete Tonelt. Yuta Yamoto. His primary school cello teacher, Miss Daniel, Mrs. Daniel said, 
he would be an asset to a gifted and talented music program. And I think that is true. His primary school teacher said, with his developing maturity, he has emerged a quiet quality of leadership, which has served his class community well and will be much appreciated next year as part of the school leadership group. So a leader, certainly, through and through. Jamie Vong. Our next student auditioned on flute, and that is Alex Walland. <laughs> Describes himself as a bit of a perfectionist. Yoshi Waters. <laughs> Not only is she a mean arm wrestler, she is a very lively person. I always have to have a pen and paper in my hand, and I like to be, and am a good leader. I have many opportunities to be a leader this year, and I've been elected head girl. Isabella Wong. My favourite interesting activities are music, sport and art. I like them because they are fun. Each one of these activities use different parts of my body and different parts of the brain. It feels really relaxing. And last but not least, Erin Young. and accurately describes herself as kind, loyal, trustworthy, and friendly with a good sense of humour. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Kent. Ladies and gentlemen, our graduating class of 2021. to the dramatic and exciting part of the evening, the award ceremony. We have a number of prestigious awards that uh, are presented each year. Some of the awards are um, basically uh, through selection uh, where students meet particular criteria, and other awards are simply uh, identified through marks. So to start off with, the Music Department Awards. We have two of these, and this is, these are presented to students who um, have shone in their level of participation, their enthusiasm, and have got a consistently diligent work ethic. So our two winners this evening are... Firstly, Lynette Grolton. And our second winner this evening, the Music Department Award for Outstanding Participation, Enthusiasm and a Diligent Work Ethic, Patrick Gleeson. Okay, we are um, honoured tonight to have in the audience um, Margaret and Peter Feebig, that's Taryn Feebig's mother and brother. Um, because tonight, uh, to celebrate Taryn, we have um, instituted a Taryn Feebig Choral Award. And this goes to the, um, the leading soprano, alto, tenor, and bass in our different choirs. So, just a little bit about the awards. From this year, the Churchland's Choral Awards will be presented in memory of a much-loved and admired former student, Taryn Feebig. Having graduated from Churchland's in 1989 as a scholarship music student and as head girl, Taryn went on to have a stellar career as a cellist and as a, as a soprano. 
A small sample of Taran's career highlights include performances with Opera Australia, the Australian Chamber Orchestra, the Australian Brandenburg Orchestra, the Sydney Symphony Orchestra, the WA Symphony Orchestra and the Queensland Symphony Orchestra. Taran was the recipient of two Heltman Awards. She sang for Prince Charles and played his cello in concert. And she performed the role of Eliza Doolittle for over 200 performances of My Fair Lady. It was Taran's wish to support and recognise the next generation of Churchland's music students who show prompts and a passion for choral music. So to the Feebig family, I thank you for your presence here tonight. And in memory of Taran, we will present the four awards. The first one being the Taran Feebig Choral Award for Soprano, and that goes to Kaya O'Brien. Taran Phoebe Choral Award for Alto goes to Hannah Porteous. <laughs> the Taran Phoebe Choral Award for Tenor goes to Guy Archibald. Finally, the Taran Phoebe Choral Award for Bass to Yuta Yamoto. <laughs> Next are the Music Alumni Awards for demonstrating leadership in the Symphony Orchestra, the Wind Orchestra, and Birdland Jazz Orchestra. The winner for the Symphony Orchestra, the Music Alumni Award, goes to Zoe Hawksworth. <laughs> the Music Alumni Award for Ensemble Participation for Wind Orchestra One goes to Finn Lowry. And the final Music Alumni Award for participation in Birdland Jazz Orchestra to Lindsay Pegram. The Paul McGeorge Memorial Award is awarded to the top string player based on cumulative marks in performance exams this year. Paul McGeorge was a student who graduated in the class of 1991 but passed away shortly after graduation. Uh, the top string player for 2021 is Zoe Hawksworth. The top instrumental student for 2021, receiving the highest cumulative marks in performance exams, Flavio Connelletti. Okay, we have the Certificate Three Music Industry Awards Ducks, so the top student in the Ducks course for Certificate Three, Erin Young. I would like to invite the music 
Parents Association convener, Shona Vargas, to come up to present the ATAR Ducks Award. This goes to the top music students in all areas of the ATAR music course. So, uh, the Music Parents Committee Award this year, um, Ducks, top student in all areas of music ATAR course for 2021, is Flavio Colonetti. I'd now like to invite our 2021 music captains, Kay O'Brien and Yuta Yamoto, to come up to say a few words. Hi, and welcome to tonight. Our last few moments with the music department our realization that we are leaving, our music presentation night. Being one of the school's music captains this year, it has been an unbelievable honor knowing that each person in this music cohort could have taken on the role and done it justice. Firstly, I would like to thank our amazing music classmates. Since awkwardly starting to sing the pentatonic scale in year seven, we have come so far, not only as musicians, but also as general good-hearted human beings. I'm sure we can all agree that we had some of the best moments in music class together, which we will cherish for the remainder of our lives. And although our deep hatred for band and choir never really left, I'm sure we all felt at some point that we were glad to have kept music by our side. Thank you to our wonderful music captain mentor, Mrs. Van, who always goes above and beyond to give all she can do to this department. Behind the scenes. No. Behind the scenes and keeping us organized is Jared, Miss Simmer, Miss Hills, and of course, our supporting parents or guardians and plenty of helpful volunteers who we owe our honest gratitude to for the past six years. Thank you so much for putting up with the noisy instruments since day one, and thank you for be believing in us. We could not have done without you. A special thank you to Mr. Robinson as well, as he tirelessly organizes the music department. Thank you for your leadership, your subtle quirks, and for encouraging us to continue confidently in six years of music. Um, to our wonderful music teachers, who, to those of you who may not know, are some of the most kind, thoughtful, hardworking, considerate, and knowledgeable teachers we have here at this school. They contribute countless hours of work into, into rehearsals, class, pa class plans, organization, and most importantly, of course, Food Fridays, to help shape our musical skills and many other skills. Your positivity and your dedication to music, as well as our obvious talent, is what helps us get to where we need to be. All those morning rehearsals, late, late nights back at school, camps, concerts, classes, and tours that didn't happen, we're never without plenty of organized, organized planning behind them. And, we're, and regardless of whether we will continue music after this year, our time spent here will be time well spent. Your thoughtful attempts to bring music to a here, there's more. Your thoughtful attempts to bring music to a here, to, to uh, sorry. Your thoughtful attempts to bring music here to us when COVID struck was truly appreciated. There are a few places you can go where such beautiful people will give all they can to over 100 students, 100 devastated kids, to bring Europe here with lederhosen's, bratwursts, and Sound of Music sing-alongs. I know I can say that we've enjoyed our six years here, and I hope I can say the same for you teachers, that our noise pollution in choir or our insistent questions in classes haven't brought you complete insanity. <laughs> so from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. And to quote Mrs. Sims, may music always be in your lives.
Thank you for those beautiful words. Thank you, music captains. I just have two very quick presentations, and then we will come to the closure of the ceremony. Um, there's a couple of music parents who have been a part of the landscape since for the last six or so years, and this is the end of their time with us as music parents. Um, the first one in her time here has been the editor of the Music Notes while studying full-time, and as um, now, while she's working full-time, is also one of our official photographers. I'd like Fiona Burke to come forward, please. The other parent has been on the MPC for the past six years and has been involved in the Aboda Festival organising uh, for all the kiosk rosters and all the things that go along with that, and that, believe me, is a nightmare. Um, she did also the kiosk manager role for all of the festivals. She gets lots and lots of kiosk shifts and bakes for all of them. She always bakes gluten-free stuff too, which on a personal level for the um, person who present, provided these notes um, is very helpful for those gluten-free people out there. Um, I will um, like to ask Julie Pegram to come up, please. I'd like to thank all of the music staff who assisted tonight with the, the presentation ceremony and the, the running of it, and the music parents and the volunteers who are out in the foyer um, getting everything ready. But particularly, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Vanderplow and Mrs. Hills, who have done all of the, the hard grunt work to get this event together. It is a complex and many layered event. Uh, and there are so many elements that come together to make a smooth and uh, effective and an efficient and satisfying ceremony that also um, is an appropriate uh, demonstration of our respect and appreciation of the students. And uh, to particularly, as I said, Mrs. Vanderplow and Mrs. Hills, thank you for the many hours um, you've put into this, the, the heating up of sausage rolls and the printing of certificates and all of that stuff. Very much appreciated. Now there is nothing left for tonight other than for me to hand over to the year 12s who are going to perform an item for you. This will be their second last performance as Church and Music students. And at the conclusion of their performance, uh, please follow them out into the foyer for supper. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, the Year 12 graduating music students.
Thank you.